Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna go out and take a look around, see what's changed. Been a few days since we got a video out to you guys, so wanna just take a quick look around. We got a few things to tell you and a few things coming up. So just hang on tight to the break. We'll get into all that. All right, guys, been a couple days since we got a video out, and uh, we apologize for that. We've been uh, just a whole combination of things between the weather and uh, had some uh, little health issues and uh, some little little things always creeping up on us. So anyway, we haven't really been able to get out and do much video in, but we want to get around today, take you a quick look around the property, see a few things that have changed over the few days since you've seen it. We've had some rain and some good sun, so things have grown, things have changed. So we're going to get out here. We'll take a look around. Also, we got a few plans coming up. I'll tell you about those at the end here. But uh, for right now, let's get out here. We'll take a look around the gardens. We'll see what's out there. All right, guys, we're up here on the porch. And take a look at some of Tina's flowers here for a second. And wanted to walk you around and show you. We've, uh, let's see, you may notice down there the little glass balls are uh, the missing hummingbird feeders. We have taken those down. We didn't have enough. Uh, business at the hummingbird feeders and they were spoiling before they could get them ate so we don't want to waste the food or the sugar so we went ahead and took them down we've got a couple others around the house and they know where they're at so they won't have any trouble finding them but i thought we'd walk you on down through here and uh take a look at some of this stuff we got the got the new cucumbers coming up in the pots they'll be reaching for those strings here pretty soon the strings reach clear across the porch and they will too when they're full grown so I would roll in here and take a look at that. Oh, here's a vertical planter we're going to be talking about here in the next few videos. And uh, we may even try to make arrangements to give one of these away. So we're going to get that planted up. I think uh, you know, it's got designs on filling that thing full of strawberries. So we'll see what happens with it. There's some strawberry plants there. But uh, we'll get out here and see what else we can find to look around. We've been trying to fill up that planter. That planter holds a lot of dirt, folks. So it uh it may look it may look small and skinny but it has a lot of dirt in it all right guys one of the reasons we wanted to get out here and make this video today even though things are getting kind of slow is uh, i wanted to show you some of the some of the plants out here they're spent um, some of this broccoli has uh bolted and it's getting ready to go to seed and we're going to try to collect some of the seed off of it because we were really happy with how it turned out but we're going to be taking the cabbage out here pretty soon, taking the rest of this broccoli out, and uh, we'll probably turn this end of the garden and uh, turn it, and we'll go right up to the edge of these peppers here, but we'll probably turn this whole edge of the garden under. We'll turn the spent plants in. That's called uh, composting in place or uh, chop and drop. Some people call it chop and drop. But uh, we'll go ahead and drop the plants right where they're at. And it will harvest what we need of it, drop the rest down, and cut it up with the tiller right back into the soil again so that all that good composting action can take place right where we intend to grow. So I know a lot of people compost off in a pile, off somewhere to the side, but when you do that, then you got all that great activity and microbial stuff and everything else going on somewhere other than where you want your plants. And uh, we just would rather have it happen right here in the garden. So. We're gonna chop and drop these two rows here pretty soon, and uh, you'll see this change here right up quick. All right, real quick, we had a question about the beans, and you can see here the beans are, uh, they're starting to put on pretty good. So what we do is, uh, somebody asked if we did a, if we do it all in one pick, or and then it's what we do is we usually will do it in two picks, is uh, we'll let everything start to come on, and then we'll, uh, We'll go through them and we'll do one pick and it won't be that great. Um, but what it'll do is uh, these were planted on different days, all of them pretty close together, but they were planted on different days. And uh, um, what it'll do is it'll even them all up. And then once they're all evened up, we'll let them have one great big flush of beans and uh, we'll come out here and we'll grab the plants and uh, we'll probably drag them up under the shade tree and pull all the beans off of them. Now we could wait for them um, to put on beans again, but 
that's always a smaller picking and we would rather be able to recondition this soil here where the beans are we'll come right back through we'll leave the bases of them in there with all that good nitrogen tied up in the roots and uh, we'll turn these under and we'll probably come back and plant fall beans right back over the top of them all right guys these are the volunteer pumpkin plants and as you can see the plants themselves are succumbing to the summer heat so they are not looking good the little pumpkins are still pretty green and uh, this is why you wait until later in the season to actually plant pumpkins these are uh, volunteers here but when you plant pumpkins for um, for Halloween and for jack-o'-lanterns and stuff what you want to do is add look on your seed packet for your days to maturity and uh, add about 10 days to that for germination and then uh, add about four more days just to make sure they're ready or any temperature differences or anything and then subtract that from Halloween so figure out how many days to maturity add about 10 for germination add four for good luck that's uh, two weeks and uh, you should be able to finish your pumpkins right around right around uh, Halloween but these guys were way too early and uh, we're hoping the plants can hang on just barely enough that they'll mature out these pumpkins but they'll be small and uh, probably not worth a whole lot so we may go ahead and pull these out or we may just let them run we're not real sure yet but this is what happens if you plant pumpkins too early all right guys here's another one now we have been able to pick a whole bunch of these acorn squash off but these plants are getting about spent too so that's okay it's the time of the year we're getting set up for fall gardening so we got let's see up there by the buckets are the spent pumpkins and right down the edge of this garden and then we'll have the spent um, acorn squash here we'll go ahead and till this side of the garden out too so you'll see us probably come back in here with some fall onions or some fall beans but things are going to be changing here in the garden the things you're used to seeing aren't going to be here anymore and some things like the drum gourds will be here till fall so we're excited to see how these turn out hopefully we get this uh, corn which is now pushing eight nine feet tall <laughs> but uh, hopefully it'll slow down a little bit because it hasn't shown any signs of tasseling yet but uh, we're gonna probably end up end up adding this to our hybrid corn project so far it's looking real good we haven't seen any signs of disease um, because it's not native to the US it, uh, I don't see any insects that have taken a real interest in it yet I know corn a lot of people think corn is corn but this corn isn't from this area so the insects don't really know what to do with it but uh, we'll go ahead we're gonna look here these are Tina's drum gourds we'll slide around here we'll see how see how the pumpkins or the watermelon are doing they look like they're doing pretty good make sure I don't step on any Tina said there's one over here but I haven't seen it I was out here earlier and looked didn't find it if any of you spot it in the video point it out oh, but uh, I didn't see it earlier we'll look up here to see the peanuts are doing really really well they're getting bigger and they're staying bright green so that's all a good sign for a good peanut harvest later this year but we'll get these cabbages out of here they go all the way up the outside row get these cabbages out of here and we're looking forward to making some sauerkraut we'll show you guys how to do that all right guys we're over here at the raised bed garden and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time over here today but everything's going good i wanted to bring you back in i know i i talked a little junk on these red onions the other day saying they weren't going to come in but we decided to throw a little fertilizer at them and uh, water them good a few days in a row and see what they could do and uh, guys these red onions have bounced right back and uh I'm not sure I'll have room to plant over the top of them without either hurting them or whatever we plant over them. So they got to be enough room to share. You can't overcrowd, but you can crowd some. But it's looking like they're coming in thick enough that uh, I've got some more starts in the house. We'll come in and fill in some blanks and we may just leave this bed alone. All right, guys, we'll have a quick look at the snacker bed onions. They are still looking really, really good, guys. They are able to take this heat we've had some really oppressive heat here lately but uh, the onions are looking fine and uh, slide down here these are the little tomatoes that we had growing up there in the seedling or cedars and I want to bring you in and show you they're getting some good thick trunks on them and uh, getting ready to take off so we're glad to have these these will make for some nice late season aromas and uh, got them in here we'll uh, we'll probably put in the 
I'm thinking maybe we'll put the sweet pea hoops back in here and we'll tie them back up to the sweet pea hoops. If not, well, maybe we'll get a drive a single fence post down through there and we'll just tie them all off to the same post. So even uh, even 16 plants can't pull over a T post. So that's why we use them. But they're in here. They're doing good. The snack onions are doing good. We're getting ready to clean that box on the end out. Peppers are looking OK. See, broccoli's catching up. Beets back there are doing all right. But we're going to get up here and take a look at some other stuff. We'll be right back. All right, guys. I got the camera held up here above my head. But I wanted to show you. I think we've hit about 100% tassel on the sweet corn. We went ahead and uh, got some fertilizer on it and got it watered in. And then we had a good rainstorm on top of that. So we flushed out all the tassels. And just to show you what that fertilizer does when you kick it up on that corn, we can tell right here in the squash. You can see the the squash that are up here against the up here against the corn. They're all uh, dark green, got some dark green foliage and stuff on them. And just a little further out, you can see the foliage turns to a lighter green. But I thought that was really funny. They get dark green over by the corn where all that fertilizer is, but uh, they get lighter green the further away from the corn they get. So. We got some squash we need to get down through here. We'll get these picked out of here and uh, probably end up, uh, I'm not sure. These plants still got a lot of life left in them. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do with those. I don't wanna speak too soon, but uh, we'll just take a look at the tassels here. Glad to be about 100% tasseled out. Take a short walk down here and uh, everything looks good. Glad to have it, <coughs> Glad to have it tasseled, but we got our project corn here on the end. It's not tasseled at all. So it <laughs> just keeps getting taller. It's already two foot taller than the sweet corn, but we'll keep letting it grow out. We need to add that fresh seed back to our project corn. So we'll go ahead and let that finish growing back out. That hasn't been fertilized or anything. We don't, uh, we don't baby the project corn. The idea is that it's survival of the fittest. So we want the strongest corn we can get. So we don't baby that any, but, uh, Go ahead and show you the tassels one last time, and then we'll find something else to look at. All right, guys, we're around here on the back side of the corn now. A lot of people had asked about the gourds and stuff we got growing back here. I'm going to bring it down through here real quick. We're not going to go all the way down, but just wanted to bring you in here real quick, show you that they're doing well. Got some big vining action going on here. We're hoping it stays out of the corn long enough we can harvest corn. But we got gourds running all the way down through there, all the way down to the end there. But there's quite a few plants in there, so we're looking forward to getting some little, getting some little gourds for Tina to play with this winter, show off some of her crafting she likes to do. I know we've been asked about that several times, so she'd like to be able to do some of that over the winter and share that with you guys. But I'm just happy the corn is all tasseled out at once. That's a, that makes me happy. It's a, if you don't know, we plant corn twice. We plant with a like an 84 day corn and uh, we go through and anything that doesn't come up, we give it about 10 days, 10 or 12 days and anything that doesn't come up, we use a different variety of corn that finishes in 71 days. So we hope that they all come up and all tassel at the same time. And then we get a full patch of corn, but it's actually two different kinds of sweet corn. They're both bicolors and they're both super sweet. So we can't, it's hard to even tell them apart once they're up, but uh, we use two different kinds of corn, and uh, that's one way trick you can use to always have a full sweet corn patch is get one that goes about 10 or 12 days longer than the other one, then you can plant the long one first, wait for it to come up, anywhere it doesn't come up, plant the short one, let the short one fill in the rest of your patch, and uh, you'll have a full sweet corn patch. All right, guys, we're over here by the wooden raised beds now. I want to give you a little bit of a closer up look at the cups Tina's got thumbtacked here on the sides of the box. What she's done is let these runners come out and uh, she puts them over in the cups. They'll start to pop out a root. Once they're rooted in the cups, then we're probably going to end up using them in that standing tower planter we showed you earlier. But we'd like to have plenty of things for that. I believe it's got 30 or so slots. So I know we got 60 or so, 60 or so of these strawberries between the two boxes. We got basil growing in there. But uh, between the two boxes, I'm sure we got plenty of baby strawberries to uh, fill that tower up. So 
they bring you in there, give you a look at those. We'll wander around and see what else we can find. All right, guys. Got to give you guys a quick look here. We'll go through the grapes and uh, just show you they are uh, they are loaded up with grapes. We're going to be glad to have these later. We got a new uh, steam juicer we want to try out. But uh, give you just a good look through and through here. There's just going to be a ton of grapes. We still got to get the bird netting on these. Birds don't really bother them when they're green, but once they start to ripen up, we'll have a, all the problems we can handle on our hands. So we just ease up through here, take a look at the rest of these grapes. We'll go over there and take a look at the sweet potatoes. All right, guys, we're over here at the sweet potatoes, and uh, just want to take a look around. I like to look at them every few days and make sure we look at them for bug damage or uh, to see how their growth's doing. We want to make sure that we see this good purplish growth coming on them that tells us they're good and healthy but uh we want to see that throughout the bed uh there's some over there but i'm not seeing a whole lot of bug damage on the leaves always a good sign plenty of good tips here growing good healthy tips take a look at those just super healthy plants so that's what we want to see we're looking forward to a good harvest this year on the sweet potatoes again this other bed we've uh starting to fill it up with some junk and stuff down in the bottom and uh we got a wood pile over there i need to chop up we'll add that on there too just kind of hugo culture it and uh put some of this other useless filler to use too so take a look over here real quick tina's little flowers we'll get on back up to the porch here i want to show you something else real quick before we get to the porch but take a look here and then we'll head on up all right guys we're back here and we're over here by the by the little uh, grapes here and I wanted to show you we're kind of between there and the pond I wanted to show you Tina's got some mowed out areas here she's been planting some trees there's a little trio there scan on up there's another trio there scan on over there's another trio there and there's her shop over there in the back but uh that's how the trees got here every tree on the property was planted at one time or another so we uh glad to have them we just it's a constant little thing you keep adding them and you wait for them to grow but she's done it to this whole hillside up here that whole hill up there was covered in trees there's some of her berry bushes there in the thicket but we've got little maple trees and stuff all over this hill here too so you can see the growth just coming on she's got some trees there by her shop but that's how they all got here one at a time they've been stuck in the ground she's got them marked here with some surveyor's flag so that evil guy with the mower doesn't mow them down but we're gonna head back over here stop and take a look real quick that's a little uh what do they call it that's a fig tree there but a little strawberry box there another fig tree at the end we'll head on back up here to the porch guys so that's about going to wrap it up for the walk around the property i really appreciate you guys coming out here and taking a look around i'm sorry i'm kind of out of breath there out rolling around with you guys so but i had a good time hope you enjoyed walking around the property guys we've uh we've got a few things coming up we've got a couple of our kids are coming in or we've got uh, four adult children but a couple of them are coming in for the fourth of july holiday and we're going to have some of the grandkids here so We'll see what we can get on tape but uh if we get going for a little bit please know we're just we're enjoying our family enjoying our property here and uh taking uh taking in the taking in the homestead and and sharing it with our family so guys uh we're gonna try to keep up on the videos we appreciate you guys coming by and always uh, lending us your support and stuff we're gonna we're gonna see about this uh planter down here we uh we, we may be able to work out some arrangements to where we can give one of those away to one of you viewers so uh, 
we just need to get this one up and planted and uh, we'll see how well it does i want to i want to make sure anything that we uh we send out to you guys or we tell you guys to go buy is something you can rely on so let us test it first and uh, we'll give you an honest opinion of what we think of it we're uh, we're not always kind to things we've uh, we've actually had a couple of products that you guys never made it to video you guys never got to see it because we didn't think that much of it so <laughs> we uh, we're not afraid to tell people who send us stuff that we don't like their stuff so and we won't tell you that we like anything that doesn't work here so in fact we want to be able to show you it working here so don't worry about that guys we're going to try out this planter if it works out we'll see about getting one of you guys one of them as part of the deal and uh in any case, we're gonna get out of here. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. We really do appreciate your comments and your comments really help us here at the channel. Those interactions tell YouTube to show our videos to more people and we really appreciate that. That's a great way to support the channel. We don't want your money, but we appreciate your views and we'll take YouTube's money for the commercials and the views. So if you guys can help us get more views by uh, leaving us your comments and your thumbs up, we really appreciate it and if you like the channel we hope you'll subscribe and uh, down next to that subscribe button is a bell youtube's been really cracking down about not sending out notifications so if you would ring that bell and if you think you've rang the bell ring it again just to make sure you're getting receiving all the notifications from the channel but uh, we really appreciate you guys doing that we're glad you come by the homestead we hope you enjoyed it we'll catch you in the next one